cross is about dying to self. We're saying, we're, looking, we're talking about tonight, he's looking for a few dead men. He's looking for, you know, some women. So, and when I say men, I'm talking about mankind. So I'm not leaving. You know, you got a couple females over there. Y'all got to die too. Oh, yes. <laughs> but listen to this. What happens when you and I avoid the cross, what we do is we conveniently, conveniently choose a crossless Christianity that places no demands on you to change. See, you know, this is the type of Christianity that many of us have gone into. That a Christianity that places no demands. Look, as long, you know, as long as I go do my penance, as long as I go pay my time, as long as I go fellowship and I go show my face and go sing in the choir, as long as I, you know, you know, uh, uh, you know, wife want me to go, okay, I'll go. Oh, the kids is going, I'll roll along. You know, that's how most, most of us men have, uh, have operated. But when it comes to the real essence of why we are there, which is to be conformed to the image of Christ, we avoid the cross. We avoid it. One of the things that this crossless Christianity that places no demands for change is a type of Christianity that deceives one to thinking they are godly just because they go to church. Benny talked about it a little bit. Do you know it's more than just going to church. And let me tell you with this mindset, the Bible makes it clear in 1 Corinthians, if you have your Bibles turned in 1 Corinthians 1 and 8, it says, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are in the process of perishing. Foolishness. My God. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are, listen, if, if you notice when you turn, when you find the scripture in your Bibles, it does not say, for the message of the cross is Brilliant. foolish to those who perish. First Corinthians what? First Corinthians 1 and 18. <laughs> Listen at this. It does not say, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who perish. Does anyone else in the Bible say perishing? Yes. Do you know that perishing is a process? Yes. It's a slow process. And so for those that hear the message of the cross, it's foolish to them because they're in the process of decaying and, and perishing. So they don't get, they can't get the revelation that dying is living. Yes. Hallelujah. Coming to the end of themselves is actually coming to life. Yes, yes, yes. What's taking so long for us to get to the end of us? See, one of the things, then it goes on to say, listen to this, it's foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved. They don't say that are saved. Do you know that we are in a process we're in the process of, of being saved. Now, I'm not talking about positionally. We know that once we gave our heart to Christ, that we're positioned in Christ. But I'm talking about, I'm talking about growing in holiness. I'm talking about wanting more of Him. I'm talking about getting to the place where, you know, that, that you fought, start to really seriously fall in love with the things that He loves. And you start to hate everything that He hates. This is a process. So it says that, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are in the process of being saved, it is the power of God. There is power when you die. Yes. There is power when you come to the end of yourself, when you come to the cross and say, you know what, I'm at the end, God. I'm not going to hatch no more plans to do this. I am totally at the bottom. But I know that you're at the bottom with me. And I'm resurrected 
with you. Those that avoid the cross, what happens is that they prefer, listen at this, people that avoid the cross, this, 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 this fundamental necessary part of Christianity, what happens to those that deny the cross or choose to avoid it, what happens is that they, they get a tendency to prefer to hear lies about their true spiritual condition. Anybody ever been there? Especially, and you know what? Benny hit it right on, you know, because it kind of goes right into the vein of this type of class, especially those who have experienced clean time. Well, I'm, I'm clean. I ain't doing that thing no more. I'm not getting high anymore. But are you dead? But are you dead? What other areas in your life are just totally alive? Still alive? One of the things that, you know, that is really sober when you think about, because, you know, one of the things that in Jeremiah 17 it says that the heart is, 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 is desperate, is, is deceitful, is wicked. And one of the things, the reality of our spiritual condition is based on one thing and one thing only, and that's how God sees us. It's not, it's not uh, on our own, our optimistic self-evaluation of our life. Do, do you know that, 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 that the heart will tell you what you want to hear about you? Yes, it your heart will tell you you're more spiritual than you really are. If you keep listening to that's why the Bible says to be led by the Spirit. Because the heart is the greatest flatterer. It's going to tell you you're more spiritual than you really are. It's going to tell you, man, I'm super saved. I can go do that. I can go hang with them. I'm super, I'm super saved. Turn the Bible to Colossians in 3. We're talking about dead men. Dead men. Running. We're talking about going down. We're talking about coming to the end of ourselves. Colossians 3 and 3. Powerful and we're going to be closing in a minute. But it says, For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Let me, let me read that again. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Like I said, when Christ died, the old you died with him. And when he raised, when he was raised from the dead, the new you was raised with him as well. So God doesn't see you the same way that he did. But you got to stay. Listen, look at the person next to you and say, stay dead. Stay dead. Hey, let me just say that. Stay let, let, let me just say that. And we, you know, I, I got y'all participating in this, you know, stay dead. You know, but see. This scripture, Colossians 3 and 3, the, you know, the reason why it's such an awesome scripture and what it had me think about when I read, for you have died. And now your life is hidden with Christ in God. The Holy Spirit said that is God's witness protection program. Hmm. Well, Let me just talk about this a minute. See, let me just say, let me just share something. See, the reason that it's important for you to stay dead is because now Christ has given you and I a new identity. One of the reasons why, you know, when you talk about the witness protection program and this being hidden, being hidden in Christ, and why it's so important to go to the Christ. Paul said, I die daily. See, one of, the, one of the reasons why it's important to stay hidden in Christ and stay in his witness protection program is because even in the natural, 
You know, we hear things. We, you know, have y'all ever heard about the witness protection program? Y'all, anybody know what that is? Anybody in here in it? <laughs> See, you couldn't tell even if you was, if you was in the witness protection program. Why? Because you were given a new, you know, if you if you were in the witness protection program, you were given a new identity by the government, right? You were given a new identity. You were given, man, you were given a new name. You were given a new social security number. You were given a new place to live. You were given a new clothes. You were given a new look. You know, they, I mean, they might have, you know, you ain't had a mustache. They might have put a mustache on you. <laughs> <laughs> they might have done some cosmetic surgery on you. Why? Because guess what? When them gangsters came to your funeral, see, they came to your funeral to see if you were really dead. That's why they came to your coffin and they pumped some bullets in the coffin just to make sure you was dead. See, let me tell you something. If you leave, you don't leave with anything tonight. Stay dead. If you do, look, if you come out of the witness protection program, now the one that has beef with you will be able to identify you. Stay dead. Stay and see, this is the thing. This is the thing. See, we go in this witness protection program with a new identity in Christ. But because, let me tell you, you know why we get out of it? You know why we come out of the witness pro protection program? Because of insecurity. 